Dilemma time. Am I the arsehole for playing a game with my wife? I'm 30. My wife, Kate, is 27. We've been married almost five years. Kate is an amazing and the cutest, sweetest person ever. I adore her. Kate is especially cute when she's looking for something and can't find it, walking around with her nose scrunched and talking to herself out loud. Some, sometimes asking the, the lost object <laughs> where it's hiding. Each other like, <laughs> what the heck? What the heck? <laughs> Brother. <laughs> this one is just funny. About two years ago, just to watch Kate be adorable looking for stuff, I started randomly hiding things. Oh, oh men are hiding so, so useless. What's wrong with They're you? They're so useless. This is not all the time. Maybe two or three times a week. Her, eh? key, her keys, purse, pen, that's phone. So no, jarring. that's so weird. Imagine you're trying to leave the house now and you can't find your keys and your husband just, because wants, of just wants to see your nose scrunched yeah, up. Yeah, like, because he thinks you look cute. <laughs> Crazy. And every time Kate's, Kate scrunched her, scrunches her face, talks to herself and asks the objects where it is and why is it hiding from her. I always help her find it after a few minutes and put it back in its regular spot and say, we must have overlooked it. Kate is always happy to find what she's looking for and I get, in, I, and I get to enjoy my wife being the adorable, quirky person she is. I was hanging out with my sisters and, re- and recently, they're both older than me, mid-30s, and they both love Kate. We were, talk- we were talking and I told them what I'd been doing and they both blew me up, calling me an asshole and a bad husband. They, they said Kate probably feels like she's losing her mind and, f- and forgetful and feels really guilty over something I'm causing. I tried to tell them there was no harm. Um, there was no harm. Kate doesn't know it's me. But if she says it's negatively impacting her, I'll stop. I love Kate. I'd never hurt her. My oldest sister ended up calling Kate whilst eh? I was driving home and told her what I told my sisters. Kate went off on me. She's never done that before, saying I've been making her feel like she's an idiot and doubting herself. She ended up going to her parents and they called <laughs> to yell at me too. <laughs> I tried explaining. I, I only do it because it is so darn adorable when I feel a bit frazzled. And it's only a little joke, but they refuse to listen to me. I don't feel like I did anything really bad, but I was just having some fun in that long run. In the long run, it's pretty harmless. Am I the asshole? What do you mean it's pretty harmless? Oh, goodness. This is the thing about men. They just be running their stupid agendas. Like, I don't understand because you like the way that my nose is scrunched up. Bro, ask me to scrunch up my nose on demand. Like, I can scrunch <laughs> you know up my mean? nose on demand. <laughs> do you know what I mean? Yeah, I can scrunch up yeah, anytime, I can, do it any place. I can even take a picture so that you can literally, have it. Literally, literally. You, you don't screen. need to put me through stuff. And you know what? Yeah, like, Imagine. I get that sometimes people might actually just even like pranking. Yes. But at the end, say it was yourself. Yes, like, say it was you. Do know you know what I mean? You. Say it was you. A lot of people were saying that this is a typical example of gaslighting. Mm. Like, how can you be try- how can you be be hiding something and then be and helping now, me look and now making you look for it and acting like you don't know what kind of game is that? Yeah, literally. literally. Make it I, make it, sense. And the thing is, though, at the at, at the very surface level, like, I'm not trying to just be over the top. At surface level, it actually seems very innocent. Just mm, a case yeah. of just you know playing around, playing around. you like someone because you like the way they scrunch up their face when they're looking for something cool. But when you're doing it three times a week, brother, Chad, I'm trying to get on. to the shop because I need to go and pick something up. Do you know what I mean? Why I'm running late already. Now I'm looking this for is, my keys. This is, what, is your agenda more important than what I need to do? Brother. And, for, and the thing is, for me, it's like, clearly it's not a joke to her. Yeah. And it's not a prank. Like, you're literally making her feel like she's stupid and things yeah. like that. And that's what a lot of men be doing, making you feel like you're yes. stupid. On Like, obviously this thing is like, oh, he's hiding things and then... um. They're not telling her where it is and then she has to find it. Yeah. But when you actually deep it, like the actual act of hiding something, not not you knowing what you've done mm. and then making your wife look around and start thinking, well, what's going <laughs> yeah, on? Yeah, it's crazy. Do you understand? It's like, crazy. Maybe like, once, but like like you said, two times, to three times, times a, a week. week. And do you know what's so mad? If and and again, he didn't say this, but you know, sometimes like if okay, in that scenario. Mm-hmm. Imagine if he's like, yeah, but you always lose your stuff. Or like, yeah, you know, sometimes make them, like they might like small regards. Yeah. Like, oh, you're always losing it. Like, well, how can you not remember you're the where cause. you put it? But you're mm. the cause. Do you know what I mean? I hope he wasn't so that, that's what I'm trying to say. That sometimes, like, especially if you're not careful, you would then start to, you know, basically be like, oh yeah, why did you do this? But actually, you're the reason why mm. this happens. Yeah. So he he absolutely cannot do that. If mm. he did, and I found out that my husband had once blamed me for something, because uh, he says, oh, this is a habit that you do. But actually, the, the reason, it's not even like a, it's a habit. Majority of the time, it's caused by you. Yes, sometimes I might have lost my key one or two times. But the majority of the time, it's because you have been moving my key around, mm-hmm. causing me to kind of be looking everywhere for it. Mm-hmm. You can't. That can't run. That's pain. And also, In your own home. 
And also just thinking about it, I'm just thinking like, you know, when like guys will be like, sometimes you'll be like, you'll be in a relationship and maybe like your significant other might be making like comments about like mm. stuff that you do. Like, or you're like you said, like, or you're always losing stuff or mm. like always trying to like do this thing. Or, you're oh, always it's slow. Like, oh, it's just a joke. Or yeah. like, but sometimes like, no, it's not just a joke. It's like, not, it's man. Actually, it's, it's not. actually harmful. Yeah. Mm. I don't know. Yeah. It's crazy. Mm. Wow. Boy. I would be so frustrated. I can't lie. And I don't even know how these couples do it on YouTube. So it's a bit of a off tangent. All these YouTube couples that be doing pranks, pranks every single yeah, yeah. like brother. Okay, to be fair, obviously they're getting paid. So it's a bit <laughs> different. But even just to fake it, like obviously you know something's going on. You know there's gonna be a camera somewhere. But immediately something goes a bit off. You know this is a video opportunity. So let's not lie, let's mm. not cope. Like let's not cap. Sorry, they they know what they're doing. Mm. But to be going through that, I don't think I understand. It's because of the I'm hearing that frequency and it's just ringing in my head. Two to three times a week, brother. I just think about how frustrated I am when I'm looking for something I can oh find. Oh my god! If I had to be going through that on a weekly basis, oh mm. gosh, no. literally. And you'd be thinking, I swear, I've been and here. and it's the fact that you actually like even joined in to try and help me look, and then you found it, and then you put it back in the place, and then said, and then it's the comment that he said because remember he says a comment like, oh. You must have skipped past. You must, yeah. have, overlooked you it. must have overlooked it. So it's even like, no. like you said, it's making her oh, feel like raw. Like, really do you know what I mean? Like, why are you doing that? It, like I said, it's on the surface level. Like, it seems so like innocent. Yeah, but even but on surface level, it's actually not innocent. No, but honestly, like, just leaving two it. Two to three times a week. That's you're yeah. hiding your wife's Boy. things and then yeah. saying, looking for it with her. Yeah, and then saying, knowing that you know say, where it is. What yeah. kind of game is that? You can do that like once in a while just to yeah. poke fun. Like, but two to three times a every week. week. Nah. 52 times, two to three times. Nah, How many times nah. are you doing it? Brother, nah, nah. It's crazy. It's crazy. <laughs> and imagine that, or something like, maybe it could be like, she's left her wedding ring somewhere. Like mm. you've now, something that is like, very sentimental yeah. to you. Like, now she's already, panicking like, extra. Now she's panicking. Yeah. Thinking, oh my God, like he spent all this money on a wedding yeah. ring. I've lost it, blah, blah, blah. And it's just like, yeah. It's not funny. It's not no, funny. It's not funny at it's all. all. Yeah, it's that comment for me at the end that's a bit like the fact that you've actually said to her, you must have overlooked it. Yeah, and you no. haven't come back to her because he said to his sisters, he hasn't gone back to her to say, to that, it say that it was him. Exactly. So it's just like an Do you think the sisters thing. are right for going back to her? Yes. Yeah. What really? Yeah, 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 because they... Even though it's, a, it's not it's not like he's telling her sisters. He's no, telling yeah, we understand. His sisters. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ah, they're fine. They're no, fine. No, mm. because, because they're not... They're not looking at it as a perspective of, oh, because I have to be loyal to my brother. No, right is right and wrong is wrong. Yeah. You're doing something wrong. Like, you're making her feel like she could be going mad. Like, sometimes men be driving women crazy. Yes. Like, pe- women can go into, like, yeah. deep depression, Definitely. like, mental health, yeah. all this stuff. Fam, all you're because, the one of, a, all because of a joke. All because of a joke. Mm. You know, the way I'm, I'm my thing is women, sometimes we'll be thinking, bro, like, sometimes you're like, oh, you. Sharon, I don't want to bring it up, but I'm going to have to. You know when you were like, um, oh, Beaches, like, I'm actually a bit worried um, because, like, sometimes I forget, like, where I'm, like, leaving my stuff oh, or, yeah, like, yeah, I yeah. might forget where I've parked my car or yeah, something and yeah. I'm like, oh, my God, what's going on? Like, sometimes that surface level, you might have said that to me, like, when we're just here and, like, next to each other, like, oh, my God, I keep on forgetting where my car is. Like, I'm a bit frustrated. Yeah. I'm not going to really deep, like, actually how it really affects you. Yeah, yeah, but, like, yeah, you yeah. go home sometimes and you're like, rah, like, I'm actually always forgetting this stuff. Like, this is bad. Like, and then you start aspiring. Yeah, that's like, a good if, I'm point, just if I'm just forgetting this now, what's what that about forgetting? Bro, bro, no, bro, bro, bro. Like, bro. It's actually that's actually such a good point. Because Sorry, I, I get up. very <laughs> I get very frustrated about the fact that like I'm really terrible directions and I can never remember where I parked my car. And I just no matter how hard yeah. I try, like even that particular day that you're talking about, like I even made a note of the particular car park, the colors, me the, I she's... sent her the level, every, and I was still looking for my car. So imagine on top of that, your husband is now hiding your kid. You'll be thinking that you're going They're absolutely insane. crazy. Yeah, yeah, this is what I'm trying to say. Yeah. So like, it's not even just the high level stuff. It's the fact that as women, I'm sure even just generally, regardless of gender, when something small happens and you start to notice that someone's constantly telling you two to three times a week, oh, you must have overlooked it, you must have overlooked it. You're going to be like, rah, like, I'm actually really forgetful. Like, mm. rah, like, mm. what's going on with me? Like, am like, I okay? Can I like, improve, how can yeah. I improve? Like, and mm. you don't always, vo- you, don't, you don't vocalize that. That's just an internal battle that you're dealing with yourself. So mm. he has really caused some sort of, you know, yeah, yeah, impl- yeah. like thing on her. Like, it's, it's not, it's not a nice thing at all, man. Like, <laughs> 
Bruh. Like I said, please, if that's the issue, just let me scrunch my let nose. Let me up scrunch my nose 24 7. I'll give it to you. Like, Brother, it's okay. I'll even do some sort of, you know what I mean? I'll put some plaster there and there so like, it can be permanently just... there so you can, <laughs> can enjoy my view. But really and truly, like, <laughs> no, nah, literally, but it's, it's, it's too much. It's too much, man. Damn, I can't believe that's actually some people's dilemmas, you know? Hey, okay. yeah. people are going through it. People man. are going through it, brother. Yeah, let, man, let them know. I was like, me. this is the most random thing. Like, I have, brother, I have to bring it. Literally. Bring it up here. What the heck? What the heck? Um, cool. Apologies, guys. I didn't realize the tripod was in the way, innit? They won't see. Uh, <laughs> oh, yeah, true. Yeah, you'll see it, boy. Sorry yeah, yeah. about that. Um, technical difficulties and all those <laughs> things there. Um, but yeah, welcome back to another episode of the BTS podcast. You are joined by your lovely hosts, Beatrice, Tammy, and Sharon. And welcome back to the BTS podcast. Whoop, 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 whoop. Yeah. We haven't done a whoop, whoop in yeah, a long yeah, time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It can't like, it's been me you know holding what, down the whoop, whoop. Now we can do what whoops because people are actually responding to our snippets and stuff. Yeah, like, do you know what yeah, I mean? Like, exactly, yeah, true, we honestly. We feel like we are actually growing a bit of an audience here, yeah, which is nice. Yeah, do you know what I mean? Um, obviously, I don't know. I can't remember when this exact episode is dropping, but yeah. shout out for you, man, for basically supporting us. I feel like... Obviously, like, I don't know how many, like I said, I don't know when this is dropping, but we've been in the studio now for a hot minute. Not a hot minute, but like a couple of episodes. Yeah, 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 yeah. Obviously, yeah, we've yeah. been on a break for three months before we came back. Man, was it that long? Yes, yes. three months. Three so months. it was a lot. <laughs> Quarter of the year. Do you know what I mean? Like, and you said, before said that no, one, we were on a break for like half a year. But literally, anyway. <laughs> literally. Um, they said no pussycat dolls, words to Tammy. Like, we're back on the scene. Do you know what I mean? And we appreciate it. I hope you guys are enjoying all the content that we're pushing out, do you know what I mean? We're pushing out things constantly, constantly. basically daily on Instagram. So TikTok, follow us on TikTok. BTS Pod underscore on TikTok as well. Yes, yeah. Do you know what I mean? You follow guys have the Spotify playlist, the Apple, Apple Music playlist, playlist that Tammy will do. Shorts on YouTube. <laughs> Shorts on YouTube. What is it that we aren't giving? We are giving you guys stuff, do you know what I mean? So definitely follow. It won't be a wasted follow. You guys will definitely see something come up on your socials and it will Please be something do. that's funny and engaging and, yeah. you know, thought provoking, all them Obviously, things there. let us know you guys' opinions as well literally like, we're yeah. loving it man we're yeah, having yeah. conversations we're, offline also, yeah we're I was gonna say, to people and now stuff. that you know I've got my segment of dilemmas if you have anything that yes. you want us to discuss yes, yes, yes. Yes. send these dilemmas like literally. we have our email somewhere yeah, yeah. it'll be in the description box yeah. but like send us your dilemmas or yeah. like DM us we shuck our DMs don't worry Constantly, we're not yeah. we ain't really up there on the 72k yeah, followers we will see the DMs anyone we will every comment even the people that have been coming for us we see your comments but yeah 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 for real Boy, boy, they've been coming for us. They've been coming for they our have next. Been Rachel Buck church proposals again. Brother, Chant. it's anyway. crazy, crazy. But yeah, make sure if you have like any dilemmas, anything, it can be big, it can be small. Like, yeah. It can even, not even be a dilemma, but, but like a could, topic it could be anything. a topic that, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. you know, could hold an episode. So yeah. just like, yeah, send man, it, send, send it, it, send it our way, man. We're all open, like, yeah. we're, we're open to receiving and hearing anything. And obviously, I know we put, um, it was quite a while ago, but we did put a suggested kind of thing on our story one time. So we've got some, you know, banked up that we will definitely make sure yeah. that we touch on. Um, but keep on sending them our way and we'll definitely make sure that we cover all things, you know, as much as we can. But we appreciate the love you guys have shown so far. Man, it keeps on going, man. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Keeps us going. Like, even Instagram, I don't even see that. Like, we've been getting yeah, like some followers. You know like, I mean? oh, yeah, exactly. Hello yeah. to our new followers, Hello. man. Hello. Literally. Yeah. Like, it might be small, but I think we gained like 80. Yeah, like, yeah, one yeah, week. yeah, like a yeah, week. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, for us, that's, that's growth. That's a lot, boy. Yeah, that's a, that's a lot of growth <laughs> for us. Like, we've been stuck like a third yeah, of our followers yeah, for a long, long time. time. So yeah. It's just good to see like different people that are not like our usual friends. Our usual friends and people that we know that have listened, like, listened to us. Frequently and things yeah. like that, but it's just good to like see new, see a new like audience of of people. But yeah, yeah legit, legit, cool. legit. Um, cool. So let's jump to song of the week. Yes. Um, oh, where's my phone? Damn, I don't know where my phone is. But no, go ahead. If you guys have a song that you want to add to the playlist, I don't know if you guys gave. Up uh, or... yes. Um, so. I was listening to this on the way here, actually, and it reminded me of LA because I was like listening to it on the plane and stuff a lot. But if you guys don't know about Jack James, like he's a UK artist. Oh, get amazing. To know. Um, that oh, guy. you don't know him, Tammy. Really? Wow. Do you know, I feel like he always even says like he's actually complete, he's always overlooked, in my opinion. Yes. Like, he, he is, is amazing. absolutely holding it down for you. What type R&B. of music does he do? R&B, R&B. it's sick. Yeah, it's That's probably sick. why I don't. He's probably my yeah, favorite. Yeah, but he's sick. I'm, I'm, I'm in my whole music listening journey I actually want to branch out because I feel like all I listen to is Afrobeats and there's mm. maybe occasionally but the thing about Afrobeats Af- Afrobeats has definitely changed like yeah because Afrobeats like, is co- yeah. Afrobeats can kind of cover a lot a lot yeah it does cover Rap, a lot do you know what R&B, I mean yeah like, it, co- it covers a lot 
But definitely do branch out to UK. There's some UK, really oh, good UK yeah. artists. Jack that are coming. Yeah. I feel like yeah. the other day I was listening to, um, you know, when Spotify like creates a playlist. Yeah. Film, yeah. And it was like an R&B mix. Mm. And then it made me realize that I actually really like R&B. And mm. I like Afrobeats that are R&B. That's yes, why that's I really what I like, think you, yeah. That's why I really like Tira Savage because... Yes. Like she has like pop stuff, but mm. like like especially from her so Celia album, the, yeah, Celia album, like yes, that has like a lot of like ballads, like R and B, yes. like yes, and she's herself said that she's she's always loved R and B, and that's mm. a type of artist that she always wanted to be, yeah. So I think like you're right in saying that Afrobeat covers like there's Afrobeats, but there's sub genres in the Afrobeat. You have yes. Afro pop, you have um. Afro house, you have, yeah. what is it? Uh, just, just different. Afro old tape. Yeah. 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 Like, tape, like, MRA and yeah. this. Yeah. And you have like rap Adunzi, as well. With, like, the engine, rap, like, yeah. Just yeah. different type of music. So yeah, yeah like you said, you're right. Mm. Um, but yeah, Jack James for me, like I discovered him a couple of years ago now, like yeah. about three years ago. Yeah. But um, he just has so many tunes. Amazing. But um, I was listening to like one of his EPs a lot um, on the plane to New York. So it reminds me of like... On the plane to New York? Yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah. So it reminds me a lot of like um, when I listen to this particular EP, which is On the Rocks, it reminds me a lot of um, Summer. Uh, so one of the songs that I love on that EP is called Hennessy Tears. Mm. I love that song. And then another song that I love that's not on the EP is called Overseas. Mm. And chat, when I just That's my that, favorite song, one of my favorite songs. That is actually one of my favorite songs yeah. by him. I yeah. love very, that song. Very, very good. Very, um, very good. Yeah, yeah, so just, it's a Jack James moment for me. Yeah. yeah. Literally. Do you guys have um song? Yeah, I have, I have a song to add. Um, it's a song that actually came out last year, but I've been playing it a lot recently. But it's, um, how do you pronounce this now? May Tama. By okay. Tenny Mayokun and Kostatich, R.I.P. Kostatich. He yeah. died like a couple of weeks ago. But um, this song is so good. Like, I feel like. Tenny, you don't know the song. Yeah, I'm not sure if I know it either. Mm. Oh, that's it. Well, if you guys listen to my playlist, you know. Okay. <laughs> uh, let me okay, see. Let me it's see like My Tama. Okay. M A I T A M A. Cool. Yeah. F- um, with- I'll listen to it on our playlist. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it's such a, like, a good feel good song. And it just re- made me remember that. Tenny can actually really, really sing. Oh, definitely. And like, obviously she had like, obviously she's lost she a lot. She had her moment. She had her moment and like, oh, she's lost a lot of weight. So I don't know whether that has anything to do Wait, with... Wait, hold on, you're saying because she lost a lot of weight. That's no, but what I'm saying is that like... <laughs> what? <laughs> no, that's not what I'm saying. I'm saying that... The fat lady sing. No, no. <laughs> no, what I'm saying is that sometimes people can attach... Yeah. Attach like a sentiment to the way that you look and yeah. if you drastically change... Like, yeah, and the thing is, your it's sound not, might change. It's not like your sound might like like people just come to you differently. Like even like some of the like when she's, I remember it's either she said it or I read it somewhere where it's like when she was bigger, people would be like, "Oh, you need to lose weight." Now she's like, "Oh, I, I liked you before when you were big," and it's kind of like oh, people. Yeah, are yeah. Like, that's satisfied. why I'm equating it with like people. Yeah, not setting up expectations. Yeah, yeah. Like, but mm. she's such a good like she's such a good artist, and mm. I remember I think she came out. Which concert did she come out to? Rema. When I went to Rema, she came out. And it just made me realize that she's actually just so talented. But yeah, yeah that's the song I want to add. Uh, let me get the song. My Tama, My Tama, mm. or whatever it's pronounced. But yeah, mm. we'll add it to the Spotify and Apple Music playlist. Good. And we'll link it in our story. Um, yeah. It's linked in our link tree as well. But yeah, have a listen. There's some really good songs on there. Good. Me, I'm not adding anything this week because me, I'm still waiting for Ashaka to drop that song that I've been telling you guys. <laughs> no, since. honestly. Because no, what? Like, I don't know. Brother. It's a tune. Anyway, now it's official because the last time I said I couldn't really say, but obviously now it's official that um, Ashaka is obviously at DLT Malta. Um, so I'm looking forward. I'm really hoping that we'll see him perform that song live there because I I cannot wait. I I'm really well, happy. You, you guys, guys have I, seen him perform and I haven't. Oh, oh sorry. Nah. That's so, and, I've so, never, and we've never spoken about it on the I, podcast. And I was trying to get you tickets to our, to our own um, day. Oh, I know. Damn, so and, that and, our day and, is going to be the worst day. Oh, uh, yeah. Damn it. Damn. Oh, yeah. I actually completely forgot. I forgot. Yeah. We hadn't actually even no, seen honestly, it. No, honestly, RIPs and lives that were lost that day because oh honestly, goodness, it honestly. is just, oh yeah, my God. Yeah, I think God. they had the funeral for the yeah, Rebecca the like the last, last yeah. year or something like that. Yeah. Yeah, it's just a sad thing, but yeah, I am happy to that I finally get Because he was him. sick. I can't even lie. He no, was actually honestly, good. I, so sick. And I hope that like, and he's getting better because you know he did, what's that show um, that he did? Jimmy Fallon. Uh, Sunday yes. Night Live? 
Jimmy, Jimmy Fallon. Yeah, Jimmy okay, Fallon. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, that performance was so... He only did two songs, but it was so, 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 good. so good. He's definitely been so worked out he's the composers as well. Yes. I was yeah. going to say, it was so good to see the composers Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah, like, yeah, it just yeah, feels yeah. like... I've never been to a composer's concert, but I yeah. really want to go. I want to go. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Have you, you I, been, haven't you? Oh, you no, know, I haven't, but I haven't. You haven't? But, I, no, like, I haven't been to a composer, but this is what you're talking about. I went to see Western, and they opened for Western, mm-hmm. and they did a whole set. I'm talking about uni. I feel like you went to something in Birmingham... I what? feel I feel like during uni you went to oh maybe you're yeah, you going to tell me that you're going to tell me I'm wrong but I don't know why I remember in uni you went to something and then like composers were doing something oh maybe I don't remember but mm. um, recently I went to Western and they opened for the for Western and mm-hmm. they were so sick yeah, yeah I definitely want to see them yeah, yeah. like I, obviously I've seen them like when um David comes and then obviously he uses yeah. them yeah. but like they are just so they so, really so, so know good. how to elevate. A yes. song on the song Ooh. and everything that they. I feel like if you're coming to the UK and you need a, like a some sort a band. of band to even support if you're not you, coming, fly them out. Yeah, literally yeah. fly yeah. them out, out because they are sick. I wonder if there's like other. There must be other people that are like more in more individual base. Like this person's yes. good at drum. This person's good at. But I wonder but if there's like a, an actual unit, band, like an yeah. actual unit. Yeah, yeah. because even others. even that um Ashaka performance as well. I don't know if you saw the white guy on Yay. the sax. I even saw like his um. Like I found his him on Instagram. Okay. Like he does like he's sick. He's so good. Like he even does like you know we have those saxophonists that yeah. come out and start doing drink deception. Yeah. <laughs> trust, 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 yes. trust, trust. He does that as I well. I would love to and, like, have someone like his, that. His girlfriend is like black. So oh, oh, really? I was like, oh, he, he gets it. it. He gets it. I was gonna say he was too yeah. insecure. What was going on? He watched like it was saying. I was like, ah, come on, brother. Yeah. Yeah. Literally, yeah, he was, was sick. too good, too yeah, good, too good. But yeah, yeah. I'm so like, DLT I'm really looking forward to DLT. So, do you know what, guys? I like genuinely like. I think about someone. You're like, you so know what? gassed about this. No, do you know what? It's because I'm like for us. As a one, I have not been on a party holiday before. Me neither. So this is my I first guess we party. Can really count. No, our <laughs> holidays. Our, our, no, our holidays. Heart... No, but that's no, to not... be fair, we went. To, we went to uh, Destination, Dubai. Destination Dubai. That was, but it's oh, also okay. old. I guess. That does count as a party kind holiday, of, yeah. but like I feel like it's not the same. Yeah, it's not it's the not same. I feel like what you were doing, you could do it in like you could do it in Dubai. You could have done Dubai, but if it wasn't, no, no it was, kind of it was different. It was, it was different. Like, there were there loads of, of London. I love black people. A lot of London time. people. Everyone oh, was there. Okay, yeah, okay, okay. but I think it's just because one, obviously, it was three of us then, but yes. now it's gonna be like the whole. Eight of base, us, not, or obviously, some are missing, but like majority of the group. Yeah. And it's like, we haven't been away since um, Amsterdam. Amsterdam. And even that trip oh, gosh, alone yeah. was so funny. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? So many memorable moments. So I just Three think for us, madness. Exactly. You know, <laughs> for us, anyway, we just need the time to connect to stuff. I just feel like it would just be such a nice time and vibe. But also because obviously it's happened before and people are like, it was really, really good. And I what I like, that, I just hope that is good again yeah but you know what's the thing just is it, it won't it will be good like regardless yeah. even if they cancel the thing and we yeah. do our own thing everybody's there yeah. and yeah. also yeah. what people are saying is you know the location also kind of matters so like for example with Afro Nation Afro Nation was sick but what people were saying was that actually the area itself was nice like mm. there's good food good rest like Germany, you can, Malta good is activity. really nice Malta is really nice so like yeah, I've been to Malta yeah, before exactly. like on a, so, on a cruise oh, oh okay <laughs> cool, cool 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 <laughs> bought some bracelets <laughs> I'm so done but yeah because the area is good as well like you, it's more than that because I know one thing that people mentioned about you know Fresh Island that happens in Croatia yeah. Yeah. people said the actual festival itself is sick but the food is trash you basically live off chips Chips. And soggy chips for the rest of like for the whole the holidays. People lose Ew. people go on no, that holiday no, and no, lose no. weight. Wait, what? Oh, okay. Yes. <laughs> yeah, oh, right. I'm literally, literally. <laughs> I'm so dumb, but no, okay. people, but no, but everything else matters. So like I know the people said that the restaurant's really good in Malta, like the, the weather was sick. Like yeah. I just need like for me, I haven't been on holidays. I need good in vibes. Asia. I just need a good vibe. I'm excited vibes. now. Yeah. Actually, now that it should be. Like, it should be vibes. good. Like, and then obviously you ask people, "Oh, you're going to DLT?" Well, oh no, but I'm going to. I'm just like, just book your ticket. Yeah, Come on, let's yeah. Go. Because like, obviously, like the day before, we're going to Beyonce. Um, Beyonce before. Oh, there's yeah, a lot yeah, happening on. I know, I'm I know. But, but there's, there's a lot. Tickets, there's a lot. There's a lot going on. Yeah. May is actually a good month. Yes, yeah. there's a lot of like things activities. Happening. Exactly, exactly. So. I'm just looking forward to it. And obviously, we've got, a couple bank, we've got a couple bank holidays in the yeah, lineup as well. Yeah, we've got an extra one as well. Yeah, exactly, oh, exactly. Oh, the king and that. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Big up him, <laughs> in it? I won't yeah, be attending. Man. I might be flying out. Yeah. Oh, anyway. Anyway. But, That's jokes. Oh, yeah, yeah. true, true. It's going to be good. It's yeah, yeah be I'm good. looking forward to that. Yeah, for Okay, real. so this week, we're going to be discussing something that has been a topic on Twitter for a little while. I don't know if it's still trending now, to be fair. But um, it's just about, I guess, 
Londoners and kind of like black people living in the UK and like where you want to settle down. Um, I feel like Londoners, South Londoners especially. Um, you lot Who are you at in them? No, South Londoners, fam. They feel like they like live it's so in entitled, isn't it? I don't really just, get it. They're like they yeah, really yeah. rep there. They really they rep, rep it, it like, hard, fam. Death. Like they rep it hard. Yeah, coming I mean, like they founded South London. Anyway, no, no. Um, but yeah, no. <laughs> it seems like there's been like quite a lot of discussion around kind of um, where you should live as a black person and why mm. people wouldn't live outside of London. Blah blah blah. Obviously, well, it might not be obvious, but if you've been listening to us for a while, because we've discussed this before. We are all living in Essex, yeah. grew up in Essex, even though we were all born in London. Um, so I just wanted to get you guys' opinions kind of on how you found it living in a suburban area and also whether you would change anything. Mm. And yeah, actually, let's start there. Mm. Do you know, I think for me, it's a bit difficult because obviously there's a lot of things that we, when you look back in hindsight, you're like, rah, like at the time I didn't actually feel like this was mad. But mm. looking back, I'm like, mm, Actually, this is kind of mad in a in some capacity. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. But at the time, I felt like the transition wasn't too mad. Um, I was um born in Hackney. Um, I went to primary school in Hackney and then I moved over like I can't remember what uh year in primary school, but then I moved over to a primary school in Essex. Um, and I basically went from a class where the majority were actually black slash Asian, and then it basically was predominant predominantly white and I don't even know if there was an Asian person in my class, but I'm sure there was an Asian person in my year. Um, so obviously very, very different. Were you quite young when you moved? Yeah, I was. I think I was sev- seven or eight. Okay. So I was still fairly young, but I actually definitely remember it. A hundred percent remember it. Yeah. Um, and I just know that it was different, but I don't think, like I said, at those sort of ages, it's hard because I feel like, okay, sorry, I'm, I'm going to touch on so many things, but like, let's say mm-hmm. for example, like, People pointing out that your hair might be different to theirs. Mm-hmm. Like something like that, right? Yes, if you're in London and you're complete... And it's not even... And London is very diverse in itself. Like London is not just black people, by the way. Like when you go to school, depending on the school, obviously some schools will just be like quite a lot of black people. I know that exists. But there is differences, right? Um, so I feel like there's some things where it might be more in your face. So like, like for example, here... Even me, Sharon, spoken about it, it's even jumping in secondary school, but like your the difference between your hair compared to your classmates and stuff, they're able to get it in like certain styles that mm, you might not be able to bun. because yeah, messy bum because you have <laughs> um an afro. Do you know what I mean? So like you start to feel like, hmm, hmm, hmm. But I just I don't know how to explain it, but in the grand scheme of life, even if I didn't experience that back then. I've experienced it now as an adult. Yes. Mm. And that's the reality of it. It's it. like, I just feel like un- we don't live in Africa. And I know that sounds such a mad statement to make, but until you live w- in a country where the majority is it's black, black. No you're gonna going it. to constantly face the harsh realities of being the minority. Yeah. Mm. In whatever capacity, whether that be in your workplace, whether that be... I don't know wherever. Do you know what I mean? Like you're going to feel it. So, mm. sorry, I know I'm jumping around the you know different points, but what I'm trying to say is that the transition wasn't the easiest and I'm not going to try and make it seem like it was absolutely smooth sailing completely. I did clearly understand that there was a difference between me and my white counterparts, even in terms of the guys when it came to Kiss Chase. And was it, um what show was it? It was the show we just went to go. Was it for Black Boys where yes. it was like the Kiss Chase where... If you guys don't know for Black Boys, it was, we went to go and watch it in the West End. West End, right? Yeah. 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 Um, but um, essentially, there was, it was just talking about, you know, in school, in primary school, where, you know, the white guy with like, you know, the nice long hair and stuff, all the girls would be chasing him to be like, do the kiss chase, but the black person doesn't really get any no, love. Do you know what I mean? So like, I knew that when it came to like, you know, desire and stuff, like, mm, um, desirability. yeah, desirability, white women were seen above me. But baby, child, that's still, that's still the reality to now. now. Yep. So like, even as I go older, like that is still the preference. Still my reality. Do you know what I mean? So yes, you are exposed to things younger. And yes, sometimes it's difficult to get that balance between exposing your child and not. So I know that my parents, you know, they wanted me to have access to certain things, which they just couldn't give to me when I was in London. That's just the harsh reality of it at that time. But I don't look back and think this was a mistake because at the end of the day, I'm sure damn experiencing the same exact things right now that if I hadn't had, 
And I'm not saying like you have to go through certain things, but if I hadn't had that exposure before, I think I would actually be dealing with it. I would actually be struggling to deal with it a lot more than now. Mm. But that's my um my summary. So it's quite long winded, but yeah. What about you? Maybe you start with like when you where you were born, when you moved to Essex, etc. Okay, so I was born in East London slash Essex, well, because I was born in Harold Wood. Okay. So it kind of yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So London. you got red I, buses and all that sort of thing. Yeah, you know I, mean? I lived in I lived in Chadwell Heath until I was eleven. Mm. So I did my whole primary school in East London. Um, in my class, majority of the people were Asian. I had what one white person in my class mm. and maybe a few blacks, but predominantly Asian. And I went to a private school, so already my experience was already different because I went to. A, a private school and like you know everyone was doing the like I, I look at some of my like friends in church and stuff like they they wouldn't know anything about like the 11 plus and things like that but my mm. school did, like, from the beginning. like you were a minority if you did not do the 11 plus yeah. okay. so my experience was already a little bit different to yeah. the to the um what's the word the rest so, like, of the people. so like majority of like because a lot of people a lot of black people didn't really know about like 11 plus and all of that back yeah. then Obviously, it's a lot bigger now. Not even, but just, not even just, I think every, loads of people didn't. Mm. No, but, but I'm just talking well, about, about spe- yeah. specifically like black Nigerians. Like mm-hmm. at the time, it was still a bit of like a new thing. Mm-hmm. So yeah, then I moved to Essex and my Essex is like deep suburbs. Mm. Like, like there, there was a, my, we have like family friends that were already living in that area. So we did have like another black family like in the area already. But even then, like, Oh wait, so they were there before you? Yeah, just mm. the year before. They moved oh, the year I didn't before. know that. Okay. Yeah, so um, so yeah, that was that was basically it. Like I didn't and then when I when I went to school, if I was comparing my year to the year above, we definitely had a lot more black people, like black girls in um in our year. Okay. In 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 my class alone, in my form, I think we had like five or six. Okay. That was just in my form. And I think in the year above, in the whole year, there was like three or four. Mm. And imagine there's like five forms. So we definitely saw like a, a more influx mm. of uh of yeah. of black girls. Mm. What was the other question? Just oh. in terms of how you found that experience and like yeah. just um yeah. Well, like for me moving from from mm-hmm. London to Essex and um, how would you I think, like I think it? for me, I think the shock was like like transport, like, mm. that's, like a big, yeah, that's a big like thing. I could when I was when I was in primary school, I used to get the bus home. And the in bus primary school. Yeah. Wow. So we'd get the independent. Yeah. So we'd be it'd be like two two or three stops like to get and it was oh, the okay. bus yeah. the bus like it was very frequent. Like mm. I could walk to my school if I really wanted to, but like yeah. it's just easier to get the bus. Yeah. And um yeah, so I think for me it was like the transport not being like having to think like if I wanted to go out, having to think like Okay, if I go out, like how how am I getting home? Like I have to figure out when's the last train, when's this, yeah. when's that. I think those are like some of the things that um yeah you now have to start realizing. True. And obviously we're young back then, it's not like we're going out like every weekend and mm. things like that. But mm. just being able, like even like getting to school, like it was a sh- even though my school wasn't that far away, mm. yeah. the bus system in my area very, wasn't that mm. yes. not that it wasn't good, it just wasn't as frequent as yeah. it should be. Yeah, and, like the routes and stuff, it was just so just a lot of adjusting. Yeah. That's what we had to do. Yeah. But I think because like we moved to a bigger, like the, the excitement of, like we did have an excitement of moving to that area because we had a big house. Everyone mm. had their own rooms and things like that. So it's kind of like we were happy to move. Yeah. But then there, there's some positives and negatives that you have yeah. to get for like If you move, you move away. Like we moved away, like far away from like where our family was. Because I know that even before I was born, my parents lived in Stratford and mm. then they moved to, Chadwell Heath and, I, and they were even telling me that when they moved from Stratford to Chadwell Heath their friends were like why are you moving so far away but if you think about it now <laughs> yeah, like, Chadwell Heath is literally, like, literally around the corner, around the corner. Yeah. but back then it was like why are you guys moving so far yeah. it's the suburbs like, yeah. that, that was the suburbs then because well, yeah. I think when my mum and dad moved there there was that area was predominantly white mm. okay. so the, everything so everything has changed yeah. so I think there are pros and cons mm. but my parents just had to outweigh like yeah. they 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 just they picked the they, they did the maths and they were just like it's better and the school that I went to wasn't too far away that's why mm. we moved to that we moved as far away from where we were before to that area mm. so um yeah. yeah that was that that was 
that's kind of me. Yeah, mm-hmm. what about you, Sharon? Similar experience to both of you. So I was born in Hackney. We were actually born in the same hospital, just like six weeks apart. <laughs> um, uh, so I was born in Hackney and lived there till I was eight. Then we moved to Essex, but kind of Greater London because like Harrod, Harrod Hill. Yeah. Mm. Um, and yeah, I definitely found that when I moved, so I moved from a... Okay, so I've been privately educated pretty much up until I was 16. Um, but it's weird because I wouldn't really call like the other schools that I went to private schools because when I went to our secondary school, yeah. I was a different, different caliber boy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Different gravy. Yeah. <laughs> when you go up, when you go up, obviously in education, it's completely different. Yeah, it's completely in different. In terms of the financial um, commitment, yeah. So my first primary school when I was living in Hackney was quite mixed. Like there were a few white people, Asian people and black people. When I moved to Essex, um, Again, like I'd say it was like a similar sort of split, to be honest. Like there weren't very many Asian people, but there were white people and like less black people. Um, And I found that actually the biggest difficulty for me was that people used to make fun of the way that I spoke. Mm. Because obviously I'll I come from saying, East London. In, in it, man. Yeah, man. Da, 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 man. Ain't that funny? Yeah, yeah. Like, and people used to take <laughs> this out of that piece. a lot. And yeah. like I really, I still say in it now. Yeah. I guess it's just something I've never really like. Gone, yeah. yeah, I've never stopped kind of saying that. Mm. But anyway, um, that was what I actually my forgot about struggle. that. that yeah, was a big like struggle. it wasn't even just being black. Like mm. that's obviously. I think I don't know about you guys, and I'd like to hear like you guys' um answers to this about when you first felt black. Yeah, because I think for me, I first felt black when I moved to Essex. Yeah, and it was just because again, first of all, the way I spoke, and then also the fact that like you know people would. Like um, noticed the fact that it was like kind of different and stuff. Mm. Um, but anyway, yeah. So that was like an that was an interesting transition because obviously I'm trying to like speak differently, but I'm only eight, so yeah. it's like, do you know what I mean? Like you can't really get your head around all of that stuff. Yeah. Um, and then um, I went to secondary school. So Beatrice and I went to the same secondary school, and that was a private school again. But like I said, different gravy as in like we were the only two black people in our form mm. and actually like if I didn't have Beatrice like I I do have friends from that school obviously that I'm very mm. very very close to but like if you've been listening to us for a while like Beatrice yeah. is my best friend so um I feel like if I didn't have Beatrice it would have been a real struggle because we were the minority like yeah. and a lot of the black people who even went to that school we were like the poorest in the room if you yeah. know what I mean so yeah, like that's the thing as well our parents were like my my parents more so were really sacrificing to put me through that education. Yeah. Like yeah. it was one of those things where it was kind of like, we are having to, we're putting her through this education, but as a result, we're not doing X, Y, Z. So yeah, I feel like for me, it was just very apparent that like, yeah. I was completely different. different like, yes. Mm. There were your pe- parents, the fact that even like we said, the fact that your mom and your dad are both working. Yeah, that's an anomaly. Is a complete anomaly mm-hmm. in that school. Mm. Like yeah, everyone's like, parents be meeting up for coffees and yes. teas and doing all that. And like your parents just can't do that. So then already you're a bit distant because mm-hmm. your parents mm. can't make those connections. Not even just coffees and teas. It's also just like, you know, like for our parents to, or let me speak for my parents, for like our, my parents to attend like hockey matches or yeah. like athletics fit fixtures yeah, and like not, dance performances yeah. and stuff like having to leave it work was struggle, early yeah. it was a real struggle like yeah. it was a real struggle and because of that like Beatrice said like everyone else's mums were like forming connections and yeah. stuff and then as a result the friendships would become stronger because yeah. their mums yeah. were friends yeah. but like I didn't have that experience yeah. because my mum was working so yeah, that I could exactly. actually be put through the education if exactly, you get what I mean exactly. so I felt like very kind of removed but again I've said this on the pod before I'm very fortunate for the form group I was in because yeah, very do- yeah, my yeah. form group were relatively like down to earth and mm. actually we'll probably get onto this in a bit but I am like where I am now in my fin- like my career because of the school that I went to because mm. my friend's dad from that school has helped me and is like not just a mentor but also a sponsor in my career and he mm. has opened doors for me that would have been impossible to open by myself. Yeah. Mm. So I feel like, again, we'll come on to this in a bit, but like I'm definitely an advocate for private school education just yeah. because I feel like if you, not just because of the education, mm. But also the extracurricular the that we were yeah, able to do. Networking. Like we went like to Barbados when yeah. we were like 15 or yeah. something on like a hockey netball tour. The networking, yeah. which again, like I just said, completely changed the trajectory of my career, my yeah. earning potential. And like obviously I still did interviews. I still had to like, you know, yeah. prove myself. Yeah. But like he opened you need the door. Person, yeah. Like, do you know what I mean? I would yeah. have never been in that room to yeah. even have the conversation of like an interview if it yeah. wasn't for yeah. him. Yeah. Um, Sure. So I'm interested to know from you guys' perspective, 
what the pros were and what the cons were. And also, if you would do the same for your children. Because I know that some people... Do the same as in, okay, two aspects. Do the same as in just live in Essex. Like, live in a suburban area. Yeah. And also, like, privately educate your kids. Mm. Because I know that some Londoners are like, wouldn't want to do that because a lot of black people who were, who were not born in London are not like street smart mm. or they don't mm. really have a real understanding of what it's like to be black and living in the UK. Mm, yeah. I feel like some of them feel like we're a bit shielded and stuff. Mm. Um, mm. And speaking to some people, maybe I kind of understand where they're coming from, but I was thinking about it recently. Like, I don't know, like, would I want my kids to have the same upbringing mm. that I had? Mm. Yeah. Do you want me to go first? Yeah, go on. Um, I think for me, yeah, because that's the argument that actually I hear a lot about Street smart And sometimes you have to be in it And you have to grind You have to do Brother Ciao Le Brother Listen <laughs> I don't feel like You have to go through Certain things To be able to understand What is going on mm-hmm. um, If you Parent your child correctly You are able to educate them On what The reality might be If they weren't privileged To have you as parents mm. Right So like, for example, I knew that even me being able to, my parents even invest into the whole 11 plus, go to a school that is not near you, all that sort of thing. I knew that I was privileged to have parents that would open up the opportunity for me. Mm -hmm. And if I didn't have that, a reality could be X. Not necessarily that it's worse, but it's a different reality. And you can make that judgment yourself. But you can be aware of what a reality, because for example, even though I'm not, from, you know, I wasn't raised in London per se, like at older ages. Do you know what I mean? Like, yes, I've not had to really like worry on my way home about what road and route I'm taking. But am I not telling you that now? Because one, definitely I know for a fact, well, everyone's parents are different, but my parents definitely did make me aware of if we stayed in Hackney, this could... Or, I don't not say Hackney, but just if we stayed where we were, yeah. this could have been a reality. Yeah. And also, like, not saying that you have to, like, draw on other people's experiences, but I could see it. Like, I could see it even though I wasn't next to it, but you hear about it. And if your parents, like I said, if you want to educate your child on something, you can do that. You can tell them information. Yeah, yeah. You can tell them where to go. You can tell them what to do. So, like, mm. I just don't feel like you have to really, per se, go through certain things to be able to gain the knowledge, do you know what I mean? To be able mm. to work certain environments, et cetera. Um, so I think for me, like, I definitely think that for the sake of my child's future, I'm willing to put them in the best scenario that I think will benefit them in the long run. In terms of the environment that they're around and like, just like Sharon mentioned, the people that they're around, the mindsets and like, I know they. I know it sounds so cliche, but like not the whole. You have to be around people that you like want to be like in the room. Like you don't want to be the. Mm. You want to be, but it does kind of help because I never knew what money was. Mm. I never knew that money could money like that. No, honestly, until I went to my secondary school and I was mm. like, hold on a minute. Like obviously, I knew that for a fact that a lot of the like Sharon just said, being black, we were the poorest people kind of in the room. I mean, obviously, there might have been a few anomalies there. That's them, but for me, Sha. Do you know what I mean? So it was very different. Um, but it's like, yes, I was aware that they are white, for example, and they were able to do this for all their kids. That like all yes. their kids were in that. And school. let me tell you, that education was not cheap. It's not cheap at all. It's like I don't cheap. even know how much it is now, but back then I like, checked it recently actually, because I was speaking to someone about this. And like now, I think it's like 22k per person. That is crazy per year. Per year. 22k per and year. And some kids, like four children, fam, in the school. A- in the school. That's almost at 100K one time. A year. A year on education. To educate your children. <laughs> it's crazy. It's crazy. <laughs> but then it's like that money exists. Yeah. And no, then you, honestly, then you start to see, like, you know, when people just catch you, oh, yeah, my dad runs this, and you're thinking, about, and it's like, rah, like, they actually run it. Like, they're actually like the leaders in yeah, those yeah, fields. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And that's what your boss's boss are doing for yeah, their children. Yeah, yeah. So it's kind of like, it just opened my eyes to the reality. And obviously, I know we live in a different world where social media can actually allow you to do that. But sometimes like you need not social rea- not social media, which is kind of far removed, but you need the people around you to show you that money exists. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So I don't that's, know. I think the biggest thing, that was like one of the biggest learning things for me actually, because... 
before I went to school, I didn't know that there were pools in, in people's gardens like in the that, UK. Like that big. <laughs> no, I, I thought it had to be honestly, those, you know, no, no, just, I thought it was just like inflatable pools. Like. <laughs> yeah, that's what I thought. I thought I it was inflatable know. pools above and not like yeah, big, yeah. big, I didn't know that it was like in, in the your ground. actual garden, in the ground. Like, like proper like, swim house and then you have a swim house. I thought that was just America the... Zoe 101. Like I seriously, yeah. honestly, like, like Beatrice said, going to that school, I did not know money could money like this. Yeah. Like, I didn't even know that you, I, I was so dumbfounded. Like, yeah. we have one friend who, you need a map. Yeah. You need a, a map. map. to go around the no, house. No, honestly, you yeah. will get lost. Like, yeah. it's it's just crazy. And it's like, to me, like, what? Like, I didn't even know this was possible. Yeah. And we're even saying that you need a map yet. And it's only the dad who works. Like, yeah. the mum does not work. Horses in the house, house, bro. In the house. Like, it's yeah. just so crazy. And I feel yeah. like for me... I've just always, it's helped me in terms of like, I'm not saying that you need to see this stuff to like work hard, but in like, in a way it's helped me work harder. Cause I'm like, I know like it's what possible. is possible because I'm like, I want to be able to do that stuff for my children too. And I want to also experience it for myself. Do yeah, you know I mean? man. We, the, um, the rewards, you know what I mean? But those are definitely the pros in terms of like, you know, like I said, also my friend's dad, like helping me so much with my career. Like I mm. genuinely, like Beatrice knows that I would not... <laughs> I would not be here without him. Thank yeah. you. You know who you are. Yeah, literally, literally. <laughs> I wouldn't be here without him. But also, as a result of that, I've tried to make it a point to like help other people yeah. as well. Like when I left my old job, I was yeah. like, oh, actually, let me put you in touch with someone in my network who yeah. I feel like could, could do it. Yeah, could, you know, like who's looking for a job in this particular area who doesn't yeah. necessarily have like all of the experience, but is keen to learn. Yeah, which is exactly what my friend's dad did for me. So yeah. definitely trying to like. You know when they say about like when you get to a certain level, like always like holding the door open yeah. for someone else. Like yeah. I'm definitely mm-hmm. trying to do that too. Yeah. I would say the cons though were just kind of like Beatrice said. Luckily I had Beatrice, but if I didn't have yeah, it's Beatrice, crazy. I don't know. I feel like I'd have lost my identity low key. Yeah, yeah. Like because I think what helped me a lot is first of all, my family were very Nigerian. As yes. in, like I, and this is something that's actually very important about, you know, like I don't know about you guys, but like my home and my school was very different. Yes. But I really appreciated the difference. Because yeah. if it was like the same, not the same thing, like back at home and in school, it's like you don't actually know, like, I don't know how to explain you it. Can't, like, you can't differentiate, like... And you I can't even know. switch between yeah. the two and understand, like, your whole being as, like... But for me, like, my family are very Nigerian. And so, like, I understood my culture. Yeah. But then also, I felt unable to, like, express that in school to a certain extent because I had mm. Beatrice around. So it's, like, somebody who... Because on I remember our first... I think it was, like, introduction day or something. Yeah. And your mum saw my mum. Yeah. And your mum was, like... The two, your mum was like, the two of you need to be friends. And like at the time, I was just, I think we tried to fight yeah. a little bit. Like, no, we don't want to be friends. Yeah, we don't want to force it. But yeah. actually, after a while, like honestly, it was so helpful because your reality is not the same as like your white, you know, yeah, like friends in school and yeah, stuff. Yeah. Yeah. And so to be able to have like somebody who actually gets it, like it just helped so yeah. much. And I feel like if I didn't have that, I would have really struggled. So I think one of the cons was just the fact that like. Seeing all that stuff, you can get a little bit like lost. Damn, like, but then that's bro. your job as a parent to create that exactly. environment at home as well that and keeps them in touch with their culture, culture. and who they are, and surround cetera. them with people who are like similar to them yes. in terms and, of like and, and even just like even like church. Level. I know you might be minor, yes, but like, I was going to say me, church as well. A massive thing that kind of helped was that even church. Like yeah, I, was, say I church. was friends with a lot of. Obviously, there's a lot of black children in my church and they all went to different schools around the area. So like I had like Sharon mentioned the secondary school experience that she's mentioning, which was completely different to the friends that I had that was local in church where like it was just different. And I was I was very much aware of like different realities Mm -hmm. because my parents were putting me in touch and connecting me with different types of people. Yeah. So that's why I just feel like, you know, the argument for me that I would normally that throw back at people that say, oh no, like, you know, I don't want my child to lose their identity and um, I don't want my child to become an Oreo and all that sort of thing. <laughs> Just, if you actually think about the environment you create at home, keep it, keep it black, keep it all of this, yes. do you know what I mean? Like empower them to spread that out and stuff whenever they go. Because the harsh reality, like I just said, is that no matter if you're not reaching that now, when you get to the workplace, when you get to other places, you're going to have to deal with that. Yeah. Environment, do you know yeah. what I mean? Um, How did you find it? Like, yeah. obviously, you went to a grammar school, but your brother went to like one of the like most famous like yeah, yeah. schools in the UK. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I think for me, because obviously, I think I wasn't privately educated at secondary school, but mm. even then, 
Your school is very selective, though. So it's yes. not like a normal. Yeah, so obviously it's very selective, but I'm saying in the sense that even though people weren't paying, there were still people that were earning a lot of money. Like, yeah, yeah. had families of, of girls like coming in with the LV bag and all that stuff. Crazy. But at that age as well. At that yeah. age. So for me, it was like, I think I had a bit of a different experience to you guys because obviously you guys said that you had each other mm. when in my in my situation that there was no there was that many black girls but there was enough black girls for us to form a friendship group. But do you yeah. think it's also because? But to be fair, yes, we had. So just explain in Sham in mine and Sharon's school the classes were taught separately. Yeah, girls and boys were taught girls separately. and boys were taught separately, but. During lunchtime, during playtime, everybody can mix. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Now with you, obviously, you you was just a girl girls, school. Girl school, yeah. Do you think that is what kind of helps as well? The fact that there's not, I don't know whether guys like play. No, no, no. An so, impact so, into so, it. so how it was is that um, obviously the girls and the guy school is right next to each other. Yeah. So there was still that interaction, maybe after school. Yeah, you're we right. Used the same canteen. Yeah. So oh, the, really? Oh, I didn't yeah. know that. Same canteen. So uh-uh. we would have See our, one of the boys at lunch. Yeah. We know why certain men were moving funny, bro. No, no, no. no, no. There was different timings, but there was like there was like an overlap. But but there was like an overlap of like ten to fifteen minutes where the boys would start to come in. So you you try and time the time. You you time it so you go to lunch maybe ten minutes before you're meant to go, and then you end up talking to. But it was very like it was like five ten minutes of of that interaction. Yeah. But then you would have like the after school, so you would know a lot of the people going public transport stuff like that. So you would know a lot of the. The guys mm. that went to the school next mm, door. You're right. So even though we didn't have that, even though we didn't have that experience, like in class with guys, we still did see them. If that makes mm, sense. Mm. And uh, yeah, for me, I like I was saying, I think I had a bit of a different experience. So obviously, my school's a girls' school, so already it kind of eliminates like the whole. You know, sometimes boys can be yeah, like, yeah, 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 yeah. Like, eliminated eliminated that like mm. during like school hours. Maybe yeah. after school they used to do all that, but mm. I wasn't really around yeah, that anyway. Yeah. But um, yeah, so I think, like I said, you guys only had each other, but we had enough black people. We had enough black girls in order that we would create a friendship group as opposed to like yeah. you guys Just being a people, pair. Yeah. yeah. So it was very easy for people to, like you would relate with other people because yeah. But when they, you know how I feel like when uh, you listen. The reality is when a group of black people gather, even if it's two, even if it's four, I feel like it's like, oh, you guys are like trying to segregate yourself. Oh, yeah, yeah. Also, you're too loud. You're oh, yeah. I used to have that all the time. time. No, no, you'd, you'd get that. Like there was times where I'd get put on report for no reason. <laughs> Mm. Yeah. Just because I was associated with people like Michelle was always on report. Like mm. she was always like she was always on report. Don't but like me. so it'll be like Shout me, Michelle. it'll be like me, Olivia. Yeah, me, Olivia, and Michelle, like mm. in our class, me, Olivia, and Michelle, this other girl um, called Afape. Yeah. Like, regard. Uh, anyway, carry on, carry on, carry on. She, she, like, I think we'd all like be on report at the same time. It was like, and I had to sit back. Like, why am I like? Why what am I, I doing? Like, yeah. I, 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 like one one thing about me, yeah, I might be talkative, like oh, like t- telling jokes and stuff, but I wasn't like a bad yeah. student. So yeah. there was no. There was no reason for me to be on part of report. Even the person that, like, I had like a mentor in school, like someone, mm. like a teacher mm. that I'd go to, like, would sign my report and stuff. He'd be like, why are you even on, why are you, why are you on report? So it's kind of like mm. they just used to associate yes, that's you the being in a group yes, with you being, being if someone black. goes through something else, so it's applicable so to if you. One person, one person in that thing is a lot of you. Yeah. yeah, even I yeah. Like, she was on report. It's like we were all, she yeah. was in another form. Like, we yeah. were always on report. So it's yeah. kind of like, why, why, why were we on report? Like we were mm. trying to segregate us. But like I said, I still would, I still wouldn't be like, I still wouldn't be like, oh, I wish I went to a school in London or yeah. like, like even though I would never send my child to Westgate because that school is just too, like it's just too, ra- too wet, <laughs> too racist. Mm. Like it was, it got to a point where like you look back and you're like, wow, that damn, that was actually. Mm. That was actually racist. Mm. But I just wouldn't, I don't think I'd send my child to a But do you think that's because school? of the timing that we came? Because I feel like we were in, we were still very much in like that whole transition, like as in like black people were just, just about entering. starting. To yeah, come. that's what I was saying about the whole 11 plus thing. Like, yeah. My I feel like our year is when like there was like an influx of like yeah. Yeah, people doing it. And then not people doing it, people doing really well in yes. it as well. Like, because yeah. you know. When we start, when when black Nigerians start, yeah. we start, we start the training. So, like, so, so you already know how it is, and mm. you already know you have to be better. Yeah, and it's actually funny because you know I was actually meant to go to guys' school. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah right. like there was, and I was meant to go to yours. Really? Yeah, I'd actually fully planned because like the plan was obviously I was friends with 
Michelle were living or that school. Just like, yeah, we'll go to yeah. the same school together. And then I decided literally last minute. I had got the Brent was like my Brent school, um, like sign off, like, yeah, you've got I think I got even an academic scholarship as well, um, because of how I scored in the entrance exam. Um, but then like, I don't know, I was just pondering on it. I was fully going Westcliff. And then just last minute, I was like, I want something different. Yeah. Yeah, funny. But yeah, and then in regards to my brother, so my brother went to a private school from year nine to year 13. Mm. And the school actually starts from year nine, that there's no year seven or year eight. And the difference in school, just by like, even just hearing like about Brentwood, the money in my brother's school, different. 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 Yeah. different. I think their their school fees are like fifty k. Yeah, yeah. It's yeah. like I think at the time when he was there, it was like thirty seven okay. uh, a year. Crazy. But now it's definitely like yeah. well over forty five because mm. it increases every year. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. he's not been to the school in what like four years. Yeah. So, so yeah, he went to that school and made the money. And the thing is that even though there was like white people in that school. The school was actually very diverse okay. because scholarships and bursaries. No, Nigerians sending their school kids from oh, from abroad okay. to come here. So my brother, that's why whenever my brother goes to Nigeria, he has a yeah, lot of friends lot, yeah. in Nigeria because there's like a there's like a a clique of schools, like mm. like, a, like a certain caliber of schools. Mm. So you have like Har- Harrow. Um, uh, Eton, mm-hmm. um, Cheltenham, Cheltenham yes. for girls oh, yeah, and things yeah, like Cheltenham, that. Yeah. Like there's, there's like a group, there's like a, a society of schools. Yeah, that they all like that. All the school fees are yeah, around yeah, the same yeah. price. Yeah, yeah, all, yeah. Everything. They all so, same caliber. Yeah. So, so, my, so in that, my brother still had the experience of, like he he, he wasn't so far removed. Like I mm. feel okay, like he was good. more he was more removed when he was in the in the school in Essex wow. as opposed to. When he went to private school, mm. because of because it's not just him being but around black people. Was he boarding? Yeah, he was boarding. Only boarding, only right? boarding. But that school is kind of London, though. No, but I'm saying in the sense but that, saying that the, pe- but the, the people, people that went are there not there coming are not from, from London. London. They're not coming from like yeah, you're not running by black. Like, some yeah. people like are the black people there would be would not be people living in London. No, no, yeah, I'm saying these people are coming from a black. Yeah, you're right, you're right, you're right. He's coming from Essex. Like there were obviously there were obviously there are people in. London, in, yeah. in London, mm. but I'm talking. But it's not like the London you. that you. Yeah, that, yeah, yeah, it's yeah, the London yeah. where it's like Richmond, that yeah, far away yeah, London, yeah. like <laughs> London where the, the, their house is one million pounds yeah, above, yeah. like those type of London. So yeah. it's kind of like it's not the London I that people yeah, the London are thinking about. Yeah, 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 it's yeah. completely different. So yeah. he had a better experience or like a black experience at that school compared to the school. Where he was before Because yeah. it's not only A UK black experience He was with people That are from different countries Like from Nigeria yeah, yeah. So he was able to Gain that experience So he just exposed you just To exposed just different, you. the right people Isn't it different and people Again The money mm. There was one day I, I didn't go for this one But I think my parents went For like a speech Like my brother They do like a speech day Every year mm. So it's like each Like they have different houses Yeah And each of them like Like come and like It's like a, it's like a fun, fun day mm. Do you know that People's parents Flew in on a helicopter and landed in, on school. <laughs> Crazy. That was their prop. That was their transportation yeah. helicopter and landed on the school school grounds. Mm. I said, no. This level of money mm. is different. Like mm. the stories that my brother would tell me about mm. the amount of like wealth and stuff like that is mm. just. It's just crazy. And the so can is- I just pause? Because obviously we've all com- we've all touched on the fact that like there's obviously money out there. Yeah. Right? Mm. But let's not lie. I don't know about you guys. Yes, it's good to know. And like I said, there's benefits to it. Yeah. But in the reality is in that moment, it is quite, and I don't want to get too deep, but like it is quite a tough pill to swallow that you aren't, dealing, part, you aren't a part of that. Yeah, because it's, it's like, hard. sometimes you'll be hearing like them talk about, not them, but you know I mean, talk, some people talking about, um, I don't know. Oh yeah. Like, for holiday, like we're all gonna fly out and then like, oh yeah, we flew out yes. to this particular place, or like then we're gonna go there, and then it's like, okay, cool, then we're gonna come back here, and then obviously like you just said it's carrying certain items and all that sort of thing. And it's like, yes, being in the room is sometimes great, like it opens mm-hmm. doors for you in the future, or whatever it is. But when you're a kid, it's that hard. Uh, that comparison thing is so techy because you don't fully you're not, you don't fully understand the fact that being black 
really hinders you per se. Yeah. You you do know it, but it's not. You don't know it like you, don't you know, know it, it now. It's yeah. not a lived experience. Yeah, then. exactly. So I just I, remember. I, I, 100%, oh, sorry. I no, I was going to say, off. I just remember like, if I actually remember, like thinking yes, back to it and yes. be truthfully honest with myself, it was great being in that school, but you are right. Yes, we're saying it's good to be surrounded by money and it does make you feel like, right, if this is possible, I, I want to try it. and get yeah. it. But mm. In that house. moment when you're there and you go to their houses, hmm. you're running around crazy. Like Shan said, you don't know where you're going. They even lost. You're looking at that map. You're going this. You're getting a tractor to go to one side to the other. <laughs> yeah. And then you come back Gold to your shot. bedroom where it's tight. <laughs> you're all sharing bucket bath. You're, oh do you not know? No, but no, that's the reality. Just to reiterate and what you're saying. And they're coming to come and pick you up. Like, you want to now go out together. Someone needs to now come to your house to pick you up. Oh, uh, yeah. It's not like you've got the private gate where they can just come no, in no, now. There's no private just gate. Gotta find, you have to find parking on the road that's outside. <laughs> it's a very, it's, it's oh a quite, gosh. it's a difficult No, it's so on. hard because I remember for me, it's, I used it's to painful. hate non school uniform. Yes. I hated it. I used yeah. to have to ask my mom to borrow certain bags. Yeah. Because, like, people on non school really? uniform. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, what? Are you joking? I feel like, well, I don't know. Maybe because your school was, like, private. But yeah. for me, it's like, you did have, like, people that did have money, but yeah. there was a balance. Like, it's not like Our like, school's that's not the thing. That There's balance. no balance. There was no balance. No, no balance. Damn. Like, that's when I thing. said we were the poorest in the room, it was like there was a disparity. Yeah. Like, it's not like, Oh, like we're all doing well. We're all doing like, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All, no, 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 no. When I said there was like we were, we were the poorest. Yeah. Let me not even speak for you. I don't yeah, know. No, me, yeah. I was the poorest in the room, oh, and there was a disparity. Yes. So mm. like, I hated North School Uniform Day because yeah. everybody would be wearing designer decked out. Mm, yeah. Mm. And like, I would literally have nothing to wear. Or when it's like your birthday, like, oh, what did you get? And yes. it's very, very. Oh my different. god, that's so true. Yeah. What did you get like, for your birthday? People's like seventeenth birthdays cars. would get brand new cars off yeah. the showroom. Like, I remember the whole car. Thing and I was like, right, I have to actually like save money to get my own car yeah. when I get my job. And also, um, what was another thing that I did? Oh, houses, like yeah. waitresses just said. I remember there was one day IT, instead of us to be doing maybe speaking or whatever it was that they told us to do, mm. people were looking at, oh, let me see your house on Google Maps, blah, 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 blah. And so yeah. people were showing people houses on Google Maps. Yeah. And I remember my de- like they <laughs> came to me and they wanted to see my house. I said, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and then eventually, like, oh, shall we just let's see it? Blah, blah, blah. So I was like, you can only do bird's view because in bird's view, it looks like it was attached yeah. when actually it was a semi detached house. Mm, yeah. And I was just like, you can't do street view because like, it's a really old house. Like that, that view is old <laughs> or whatever. But no, it's the very reality painful. was actually. At that time when yeah. I was living in Harris Hill, like we were living in the same, and there's obviously nothing wrong with a semi yeah. detached house. Yeah. But when people are living on acres of land and you're living in, <laughs> yeah, it's different. Ciao. Like it was so hard. Yeah. Like, I remember, like I never had people around. Yeah, me either. Never. Ne- I think it was only, only me, yeah. only Sharon, and that's the thing about it. That's why we said it was very different because it was like I could actually bring Sharon to like my different reality of my yes. home. It's it's a mad thing. It's I can't crazy. lie to you. It's a mad thing. I, I, yeah, I'm trying to think. My experience was just so different. And mm. I genuinely think it's because all of my friends were black. Like, yeah. I, like we, I had like white friends in but school. That's what but these, that's like, what these people in London are arguing for. They're saying that you needed that companionship. Community. Yeah, but you do. But I think, what they're, I think what they're failing to understand is like you do get that. It might not be in like the masses that they have, mm. but... You, it's you possible. Do, it is possible. And also, to people, get are, that. We, people are moving out here, so the demographic is definitely. Oh, yeah. yeah. And, and, and the thing is, is that it's like. Now on my street alone, I'm sorry, on my street alone, I remember when we came, we were the only black people. Now, even on that pathway to go into my house, there's at least three or four of us. Really? On, mm. Yeah. Wow, three or four of really us. Good. Like, I, I do in my area see a few more black people. Like, there's like one of my like dad's friends, like, they made friends because of like my brother. Mm. But they moved to our areas where they were living in, I think, Grays before mm. they moved to our area. Mm. And yeah, like, but I don't know how to, I, like, I just feel like my experience in school was just a bit different. Like, yeah. I didn't. I didn't have like like I I mean obviously they never looked at like our houses and stuff mm. but I never felt like and that's maybe that's maybe that's, maybe that's the argument for private school versus non private school because like we just said that when you're in secondary school you're more aware. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Even, but even when I was, I remember even when I was in primary school which mm. was private mm. there was a lot of Asians and you know like 
Asian, like yeah. notorious for they they can have like yeah. they got money. Yeah. So the houses that they like they were living in like Ilford and back mm. then like now you think of Ilford, I don't know, but, but yeah. some Ilford has houses. some big yes. houses like yes. houses with gates. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yes. I already like if I'm comparing my house to yeah. my house back in Chadwell Heath to those houses, yeah, there there is a very stark difference. Yeah, but I never felt like I never I never I never felt like oh. These people have so much more money, and mm. I, and I don't know whether it's because they were Asian or like mm. I never felt I never felt black until I got to secondary school. Like mm. my private school, like I didn't feel like a type of like I didn't feel like oh I was different from yeah. anybody else because obviously mm. we're children, we're innocent. It's only when I got to secondary school and I was like wow, like actually singling me out for things that I didn't do yeah, or they're pinning things yeah. on me, and then yeah, in regards to like watching my brother go to um private school as well. Yeah. Like you said, it made me realize that damn, there's actually money out there. Mm. And I think in in as well, it made me realize that mate, black people also have money as oh, well. Oh, they definitely do. Like of course there's like obviously you see white like um you see white people that are very very wealthy, but then I'm telling you, one of my brother's friends, there are four of them, mm. quad, quadruplets whatever they're called, four people. Mm. Three of them were in Harrow, the girl was in Cheltenham. Cheltenham girls, all at the same time, all the same age, all. It's crazy. That's crazy. Obviously, they've come from Nigeria, but mm. even then, like, to, but to it's even like, exchange. It's like, it's, it's, but it's the thing is, though, when you look at that, you think, that's an anomaly. You look it's at not, that and you think. But it's not an anomaly. No, but, for, no, but as in you, you look at that and think, even, I'm sure that even in your brother's school, mm-hmm. those black people mm-hmm. were still the minority yeah. compared to the other races of people in, what, the, in school, the school. In of the course, school. no, of so course. So that's what I'm trying to say. Black people are... A min- minority, minority in anyway. that school. Even but, in, but, in my the world. Point, but my point is that <laughs> we're actually the global majority. But carry yeah, on. I know, right? Which is weird. Which is so odd. So crazy. <laughs> but I just feel like it still made me realize that damn, like there are black people here that like have money. But the thing is, we're not in the UK. But the, well, that's yeah, the thing. But that's the thing. Yeah. When you think about like where we are in this UK, like it's actually even though you might see like we all know wealthy mm. black people, but it's like. It's rare. Like you yeah. have to be like, right. Like, what some, did you yeah. do? This isn't like you, you. You can't just have your normal job, your normal business. No, no, yeah. What did you do? Like, not to sound like one way or another, but like even like sometimes, even if a black person is wealthy, a lot of them are in interracial relationships. Mm. I don't know if you've seen that. Like a lot of them are like even just through, yeah. a lot of them are in interracial relationships. So it's mm. kind of like. I don't know which angle that's going down, yeah, but I don't I know what it. conversation that starts. <laughs> no, that makes sense. No, it makes sense. I don't sense. know what conversation that starts, but that also has an, an aspect to it as well. Yeah. Mm. And then I think as well, in terms of like, I know we asked the question, would would we want our children to have the same experience? I feel like I wouldn't, I feel like I'm more inclined to send my child to a private school as mm. opposed, if I had the means to do it, yeah. I would send my child to a private school because I feel like you get, more out of it, if that makes sense, and it's more. And honestly, it's so much more diverse than a grammar, like a grammar school. Mm. In my in my experience, when you say diverse, what do you mean? Like there's more, like there's more people from different ethnically diverse, ethnically diverse, so and then sure. I think that's I think that's your brother's experience, you know. And the location, yeah. I feel like for us because we were deep in Essex as well, way. it's very different. But what I'm, but, but but my point is that. Like I don't know how to like it's diverse in the sense where do you okay, mean socio socio economical? I think mean in, I think in I think in all I think in all kind of all aspects because I feel like even in my brother's school, like obviously there were people that were very 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 wealthy, mm. but then there were people that were just like just getting by. Just getting by, but so, yeah, enough, so sure, yeah. enough, enough to send their child to a school that's yeah. Oh, then that, they're not just getting by. Yeah, just but getting what by. I'm saying is that I don't know how to explain it. Like. But your, your, my your mind becomes skewed then because then you're that just getting by. They're doing it's very damn very, well. Very well like, they can the I know, but but I, but my point is that how do I explain it? I just feel like you have a better range. I don't know. I just feel like that he had a lot of. There's a lot of like like you said about networking and opportunities. Mm. I just feel like if you're able to send your child to a school like that. Mm. Why restrict them from why it? Rest- why, why restrict them from it? Unless you can physically cannot. I'm not saying that. Yeah. yeah so it's a privilege. I wouldn't, yeah. I wouldn't, I wouldn't, yeah. die, I, I wouldn't tell anybody to run themselves in the ground. Yeah, just it's not, no, it's, 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 it's not worth it. If you have the means, if you have to, the means to freely, do it, I think, I think there's a lot of pros. Yeah. Like, obviously I think comfortably cons. is a word. Yeah, yeah I think there's a lot of, there is a lot of cons, but in mm. terms of pros, my brother has like managed to, like, being in that environment, 
set him set him up to like be able to see that wow, there's actually like there's more to life than just mm. getting like getting, getting by. by. Yeah, like that's you, the thing yeah. that you can, I you can, yeah, you can actually well. you can actually make a lot of money like. Rubbing I mean, arms with people Like I'm telling you It's rubbing- actually not And I think Sorry to Go cut on. you But I feel like This is one thing And it's the harsh reality Of life Whether you like it or not But it's not what you know It's who you know And yeah. I feel like The quicker and the sooner That you just get on board With that mentality yep. mm. The better it will be for you Because like we've Kind of all said mm. here Like who you know Can open doors to things Where like What you know Becomes irrelevant Do you know what yeah. I mean And then like, like I'm just Keep on going back to my brother But like He would be friends Where they're Where he'll have friends Of parents Who are like Lawyers, mm. um, politicians, mm. um, that different aspect. So even if he wanted to be like, oh, I, I, I don't know whether this is, I don't know whether this actually happened, but I, I think it did. Like some of the internships he was getting just before he went to uni mm. were like through mm. people, like, his yeah. friends, parents, yeah. or things yeah. like that. Like, like being able to have conversations with mm. people's dads. Like yeah. one of like there was one time that his one of his best friends in school every year took him on holiday. Mm. Every year they were allowed to bring one more person with them Mm. on holiday. And he was, and even with that, it just opens your eyes to know that, wow, there's actually a life like this that I can attain. Mm. Sometimes if you, if you, if you're in an environment where things are being boxed, you don't really get to think that, oh, there's, there's like a, like there's like an outer, an outer life. And that's just with anything. It's not just with things as well. Like if you're exposed to more, you're able yeah. to to dream and think, oh wow, there's yeah, all of yeah. this stuff is attainable. Yeah. But I think I think that's why I would send my child to a private school. Okay. Because like you said, like even in your private school, your friend's dad helped you get, mm. helped you open the door to find a career and mm. things like that. So mm. not saying that, not wait, before let's put a disclaimer, not saying that if you go to like a <laughs> public school or yeah, no, no, a no, no, grammar school that you, no, those opportunities and aren't apple. Just because you go to a private doesn't mean you're set. No, yeah, it doesn't, doesn't mean you're actually. set as well. But sometimes right mindset, sometimes so. it's good to to have these opportunities. Yeah, it's the opportunity. It's the opportunity yeah. thing for me. That yeah. is what I feel like my dad did a very good job of like two things before I went to Brentwood. Number one, like you probably will be the poorest in the room. Like he just told me that straight mm-hmm. facts, period. Like mm-hmm. he was like, that is a real conversation. No, mm-hmm. he really had, he sat me down and he was like, yeah, I don't same. want you to get there now and to be thinking like, oh why my don't goodness, I why don't I have this? Why don't I have that? Blah, blah, blah. He was like, ultimately we're making a real sacrifice to send you to this school. Mm. The second thing he said to me as well was like, speak to like your friends and stuff. Not like using your friends, but also mm. like if you know what you kind of, if you find a subject that you're interested in or like a career that you're interested in, speak to people there because you don't, never know like whose mm. parents are working in that field and can help you. Yeah. Mm. And so for me, obviously I did that and like mm. I got my first internship when I was, I think I was like 15 and it was like through my friend's dad who has helped me over the last 10 plus years to like get to like where I am now. Yeah. But I feel like for me, that was really important. But just to answer the question about whether I'd want my kids to like have mm. the same upbringing, I would, but only if it was almost identical in the terms of mm. like, I would want them to have black friends. Mm-hmm. Like, I'm being completely honest now. Like, mm. hopefully I will marry a black man. And this I'm- is even the thing though, like I said, we are creating those environments now. Like, for example, like we have black friends now. So obviously we'll want to continue that relationship and our yeah. children will be friends, even if they might not go to the same school. So like, there's different, you know what I mean? There's different aspects. Amen. Um, but continue, Sharon. Yeah, so I, I only if it was like almost like identical, identical in terms yeah. of like, I would want my children to have black friends. Like at the end of the day, like, let's be honest, unless something drastically changes in the next like five, 10 years when we're having kids, like black people will be the minority, will be overlooked. Like yeah. that is just the reality. And yeah. unless you get on board with that, like you're just going to always feel like, mm. you know, like you're less than. And yeah. actually working in the industry that I worked in, so like the last company I worked for, even though there were other black people there, like I felt like I was black. The them. blackest. Yes. Like I don't know how to explain yeah. it. It's yeah. just because yeah. Yeah. even though yeah. I was privately educated, the way that I speak here yeah, is obviously different. And my, even though I was privately educated, I don't like wear that as a crown of honor. Yeah. Like, do you know what I mean? Like yeah. as a badge of honor, like yeah. I and was that's privately educated. your parents. Yeah. Like I really don't give a heck about that. Like I yeah. will be completely honest in that my parents literally like drove one car for like, Five years because they couldn't afford a second car because they put me through private school education. Mm. And we only really started going properly on like family holidays after I left Brentwood. Mm. Um, so I don't wear that as a badge of honor. Like I'm very understanding of like what the sacrifice, the sacrifice that my parents made for me to go to that school. Mm. Yeah. But and again, I'm not trying to speak bad on like the other black people at that organization, mm. but I feel like it That's... was almost difficult for me to like really build a relationship with those black people at my firm because it was kind of like they were very much like. We're black, but we're not black. 
Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, as in, like, one yeah. one person even told me that I was her only black friend, and I'm like, you're 27. Like, how am I your only black friend? Like, you you're yeah. you're black. Do you know mm-hmm. what I mean? Yeah. Um, but it was very difficult for me to like form like yeah. really strong relationships with them because they were they are black by skin, but like mm. almost kind of like a little bit further removed because mm. it's kind of like and that's, they've grown I, up I with just like around a white environment. And I think that is also because And parents... they went to school in London and lived in London. I just want to make that mm, like explicitly yeah. clear. I, I don't know for you guys, but parents, I made man. a conscious effort in school to make sure I had black... I don't know about you guys. Yeah. It's just make more sure I had yeah, black friends. Yeah, like, yeah, obviously, right. we did things like Black History Month, like things mm. going oh, on yeah, in I our school. So... It was very not easy to now find black people, like mm. be friends with black people, like across all year groups. Mm. But I just made I had to make sure that one thing I wanted to make sure is I didn't have an Essex accent. Mm. And I made a conscious <laughs> effort that I had black friends. Like, yeah. yeah, I can have my white friends, but I made a conscious effort. To, mm. And then when I went to Palmer's br- Easy yeah, as pie. Yeah, literally. literally <laughs> Easy like as true. pie. So yeah. I, I don't know. I just, I had, I just had to make a conscious effort. Like you can, I can't you can lose get the myself. Right balance. You can get the I, right balance. You can get man. the right balance, and I yeah. can't lose. I can't lose myself in the sense that I don't want to feel like I only like. How can you? How can someone at work be your only work black, friend. black friend? And that's, when that's you're not black. your friend. When you're that's a work exactly when you're black. black. When like, you're black. But, no, but literally, I make a conscious effort. Like I cannot. I cannot fade. I think for her, like, and then sorry to cut you off, but like. In my school, you would see like girls that are black and you know in upper years because obviously you come in year yeah. seven mm-hmm. and then you then you identify all the black people yeah. in the black girls, and you would see them. You'd be like, "Sorry, I cannot. I cannot be like her. Mm. I cannot like be so far removed mm. that like even the way that like your hair is like you're straightening it mm. like to try and fit into mm. the mold of like mm. even damaging your head. And you're it, honestly, I keep on saying this, but I genuinely do feel like it starts at home. Yes, it does. It it, if your does. parents are in still in an environment where they remind you you're Nigerian, you're, you're Nigerian, black, you're my, going my to your uncle's house, tell me, speaking your bar, tell you're me. doing all this. My dad will tell me, listen, I'm not a white man. Yeah. My dad will always make say that. Make it clear. Like, make it clear, like, listen, I'm not white. So all this, yeah. all these things that you're bringing on, all these ideas that you're getting from school, yeah. <laughs> keep it at school. Yeah, literally. All these literally. ideas and yeah. ideologies that you're thinking, oh, yeah. you can do this. Oh, no, sorry, that does not run in this, yeah, yeah. In this house. Fact. So I had to make a conscious effort. Like, I need to, I need to be friends with people that, their dads are also telling them, oh, I'm a, I'm not a white man. Yeah. All these ideas and ideas, they're not coming. Yeah. Like, I needed to be with some people like, like-minded like mm. that. And I definitely felt that that conscious effort has has paid off in the long run. Because mm. now I'm like, I'm so proud. I'm black. Like, yeah. I can have white friends. Like, I, like yeah. If anyone wants to be my friend and you're white, <laughs> come. But yeah. I gravitate to people that like live me. the same experience yeah. as and me. And honestly, I feel like it's made it so much easier for me to just be my authentic self. Because yeah. like, especially when I moved into like this particular career where it's just so hard to like get into that career anyway. Like mm. a lot of the people that were even working at my firm, it was kind of like, who you know, let's be completely honest. Mm. But... I was just like, I don't give a heck because at the old, at the end of the day, like I'm very content with the friends that I currently have in my life. Yes. Any other friends on top of that, like you're just an added extra. Like mm. I don't, no offense, but I don't need you in it. Like I've mm. got all the friends that I kind of need. Yeah. So yeah. like when I was going to work, like I wasn't really trying to fit in. I wasn't trying, to, I've never skied. Like, I don't know what you want me to do about that. I've never mm. skied. Like, <laughs> do you know what I mean? Like yeah. the first ski trip I went on was with my work. It was fully expensed. I probably won't go on another one until it's fully expensed again. Mm. Skiing is very expensive. Like, do you know mm. what I mean? Like, and I just, I'm happy to stand in my truth. If you don't like it, don't like it. Like, and I just feel like a lot of people struggle with that. Mm. And also a lot of people who live in London who haven't had the experience that we've had of having to do the hard work when we were 11, 12, 13. Yeah. They're doing it now when they're 23, 24, 25. Yeah. Because they've never had to really like, they've never like been privy to that kind of life. Do you mm, know what I mean? Yeah, for sure. So I feel like, just again, to like reiterate, um, I would love to give my children a private private education, not just because of like the opportunities that you're exposed to, but also the fact that like, I feel like I had a very... F- Full and rounded education in terms yeah. of yeah. it was academic, but also I played a lot of sport. I like went on like loads of trips and stuff, and I really enjoyed like school. Like I actually enjoyed like learning what I learned. But of course, there are you know cons and stuff, and yeah. we haven't touched on it here. But like just in, even I guess Beatrice alluded to it, like the desirability aspect. Like mm. listen, if you go to a private school where it's predominantly white, like probably no one's gonna find you attractive. Like mm. just look at look across the road where they they have the state schools and stuff. Mm. There's probably a few guys there. Literally, literally. 
Yeah, yeah man. Interesting. Interesting. I think that was yeah, that was yeah. everything. Yeah. This conversation is never ending. Never, never ending. Never, ever, ever. But it's ever. good just to hear like yeah. perspectives and yeah. mm. obviously, even though we're all friends, we all have different definitely yes. different realities. Of, yeah. But we all end up in the same place. Look at us now. Yeah. Us now. Come on. Driving. Come on. <laughs> Don't kill me. Um. Yeah, but man. yeah, thank you guys so much for listening or watching the podcast. Yes. Um. We're so glad to have you guys here. Um. Please like comment share subscribe turn on the notifications subscribe comment you comment mm. you can find us <laughs> you can find us anywhere chat <laughs> you can find us on youtube shorts you can find us on twitter um instagram and tiktok at bts pod underscore um yeah let us know what you're thinking also like let us know like whether you've been privately educated whether you'd want your kids to have that experience or mm. vice versa um yeah, is there anything else? Or no? No, that's it. No. Man. Thanks so much, guys. Yeah, see you next week, Monday. See and have a lovely week. week. Yes. Bye. Bye. Bye.